This video presentation shows only a portion of this standalone material. This is just a lesson proper part. The transition scenario from the motivational activity to lesson proper was cut. Exactly. Very nice idea. With that, I have here a video presentation, which will show you an overview on how our body compensates with the changing environment. Are you ready to watch class? Yes, teacher. We're very excited. Let us start. Watch carefully, so that later you can answer some of my questions. Today's video will introduce us to something known as homeostasis, specifically human homeostasis. What exactly is homeostasis? Well, homeostasis is a process that allows us to maintain our internal environment despite dealing with an external environment that is constantly changing. You see, the conditions with our body can fluctuate a whole lot for many different reasons. A hot day outside might cause an increase in our body temperature. The consumption of that delicious hamburger will increase our blood glucose levels. Or the stress from studying from that big test might raise your blood pressure just a little bit. Fortunately, our bodies have mechanisms to counteract these changes and bring us back to those normal conditions where our bodies function best. I'm talking about homeostasis. All homeostatic mechanisms will have three components involved in the regulation. The receptor will sense any fluctuation within the environment and proceed to send a signal to the control center. The control center will then determine what sort of response is required to the change and it will send the signal to the effector. The effector will then receive the signal and adjust accordingly. When the effector adjusts in a way that attempts to stabilize a variable, that is, bring it back within a normal range, it's called a negative feedback loop. While positive feedback loops also exist within the human body, negative feedback loops are far more common and will therefore be our focus today. So let's look at one of our earlier examples of homeostasis, that is, body temperature. Temperature homeostasis, also known as thermoregulation, is happening constantly within our bodies. Let's see how our body adjusts on those hot sunny days. A section of our brain, known as the hypothalamus, helps us detect fluctuations in temperature. It receives signal from receptors on the skin, as well as internal structures, and decides what should be done. This is just like a thermostat in your house, turning on and off the heating or air conditioning. The hypothalamus links the nervous system, where the receptors are, to the endocrine system, a collection of hormone-secreting glands. If the hypothalamus detects an increase in temperature, it would signal certain glands in the body to secrete sweat, which would in turn cause heat loss due to evaporation. On top of this, the hairs on your body will lay flat, releasing warm pockets of still air caught between them, and the muscle walls of the arterioles will relax, causing an increased flow of blood to the capillaries in the skin, allowing more heat to escape. In cold environments, we would see the opposite happen. The hypothalamus would signal the glands to decrease sweat production, the muscles will cause body hairs to stand on end, and blood flow will be directed away from the outer capillaries and towards the warmer core of the body. We only looked at one example of how stable levels of a variable, in our case temperature, is maintained in our body. But as you can see, homeostasis occurs with many other variables, ensuring that our bodies function at their optimal condition. I hope you learned a lot from this video and will continue to learn all about homeostasis. Thanks for watching. Created using Powtoon. Okay. Did you enjoy and understand the short video presentation?
Yes teacher. We really enjoyed it. It gave us a concept in understanding how our body works. Good. If you really understand the video you have watched a while ago, what is your idea about homeostasis? Anyone from the group? Homeostasis teacher is the process by which organisms maintain a relative stable internal environment. Very good. Any more idea from the class? Yes, teacher. Homeostasis is any process that helps maintain our internal environment while dealing with an ever-changing external environment that is constantly changing. Exactly. It seems that you really made some notes while watching the video. Let's make the definition simpler. Homeostasis means keeping things constant. It comes from the Greek words homeo, which means similar, and stasis, which means stable. Homeostasis means maintaining a stable internal environment, regardless of external factors. It is an example of dynamic equilibrium. Dynamic equilibrium, dynamic, which means changing, and equilibrium, which means balance. In other words, a state of balance between changing process. Homeostasis is happening constantly in our body. We always eat, sweat, drink, dance, eat some more, and yet our body compositions remain almost the same. For example, during summer, our body starts sweating to cool down the heat from the external environment in order for us to maintain a stable body temperature of 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Can you give another example of human conditions integrated with homeostasis? Yes, teacher. For example, no matter how much we drink our bodies do not swell up like a balloon if we drink tons and it does not shrivel like a raisin if we drink little. Very good. Somehow, our bodies know how much fluid we need to keep and maintain a constant level, regardless of how much water we drink. Imagine that. Our body has its own way of determining what is abnormal without even thinking. Aren't our bodies amazing? Another example of homeostasis from your class? Yes, teacher. I will get my example from your video presentation. The consumption of hamburger will increase our blood glucose level. This deviation will trigger the pancreas to produce insulin. Insulin will then absorb the extra glucose, thus bringing down the blood sugar back to normal. Very well said. Nice explanation. As you can observe, based on all of your examples, all homeostatic mechanisms involve three components for body regulations. First is the receptor, which detects the change in the environment. Second is the control center, which receives the information from the receptor and determines how to respond, so the body will return to its normal set point. And the third is the effector, which implements the needed response. Can one of you give a condition that explains how these three components were used in homeostasis? Yes, teacher. Like your example earlier regarding thermoregulation. Imagine that you go outside, and it's really hot. This will start changing your body temperature. Hypothalamus in our brain monitors body temperature. And if it starts raising, hypothalamus will activate the organs, that will help bring the temperature back to its normal set point. That's why, if your body temperature rises, you will start sweating. This is a compensatory response by your body to lower your temperature back to normal. Excellent! Very nice explanation, here is another scenario. Imagine that you drink lots of water. This water will go into your blood, increase its volume, and raise your blood pressure. This will then activate pressure receptors in your blood vessels that will signal the brain to release hormones. Those hormones will act in your kidney to promote elimination of water through urine. Thus, you'll find yourself suddenly going to the restroom more often, which will then reduce the amount of water in your blood, and thus, lower your blood pressure. Did you get my point class? Yes teacher. 
it's like making sure everything inside our bodies stays at a normal state. Exactly. If there are too much of something, our bodies get rid of it. If there is too little of something, our bodies will produce it. So now, can you give me your idea why homeostasis is very important in our body? Yes, teacher. Homeostasis is very significant in our body. By maintaining homeostasis, organisms remain healthy, strong, and stable with protection from attacks of foreign organisms. That is in my mind too. When homeostasis fails, it usually results in serious bodily damage or disease. For example, the disease diabetes is a failure in the homeostasis of blood sugar. Excellent! Any deviation from homeostasis leads to disease or illness. A number of organs are involved in maintaining homeostasis, and these include lungs for controlling oxygen and carbon dioxide. Pancreas for blood sugar levels. Kidneys for blood pressure, blood pH and water in the body. Hypothalamus and skin for body's temperature. Is the concept of homeostasis clear to you now, class? Yes, teacher. It's very clear. Very nice. It seems that you really understand our lesson proper today.